Hello and welcome to a Tinge Ginge. Now today it's going to be a bit of a mixed match of stuff that's going on. So I'm going to do a little bit of feeding of some of my snakes, some of my adults, some of the hatchlings and the holdbacks I've got behind me. Um, I'm also going to give you an update on how the eggs are doing. Um, they've got, if I double check, I think about 20 days till the first clutch is about to pip. Um, so I'm just going to give you a little look at the eggs and how they look now. Uh, compared to how they looked before because as they start getting closer and closer to that that pipping day you, you can see the eggs they slowly start to sink in um, as long as you've got your humidity right in the box then the sinking in just shows that they are getting ready to actually come at you but i'll just show you that in a little bit more detail so you can see and we'll actually get the torch out and can them a little bit just to see if we can see any movement within the egg and also if you do follow me on instagram you'll see that i've posted that i have bought a few more snakes um, they're going to be really big uh, investments for my projects I've got a lot that I want to do with them. I've got quite a few females that are getting ready to breed. Um, so as soon as these males I've got are up to size, they're going to be plugged straight into those females and just building those foundations for those future years to come so I can actually get the stuff that I want and make a few extra little bits along the way that I haven't seen before. So at the end, I will be showing you them. So make sure you stick around so you don't miss seeing them. So we're going to jump straight into the feeding and then we'll get to looking at those eggs and those new snakes. So I'll save this guy for last. Uh, this is my big banana that I've actually sold to Dom and Katrina over at More Balls. Um, yeah, if you are watching this video, then just so you know, he is a very aggressive feeder. Now, if you've watched videos from mine in the past, you do know that I keep my, my frozen in a bucket in the room to sort of marinate the room so the snakes know that smells in the room. As long as there's no rodent smell, he's dog tame. He, he's absolutely lovely. But as soon as he knows there's food, it's not going to pick up on him because it just can't focus. Oh my, there he is. He's just sitting there waiting every single time and he's so patient. He's, he's absolutely brilliant. So, um, yeah, got to be a little bit careful when you feed him because he does love to fly out of the tub. But I think that's that's what you want, really. You want that aggressive feeding response. So let's, um, let's see how he does. Just grab the rat. Get bit, I'm not gonna be happy. There you are, mate. Is this what you want? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, there he goes. Oh, he's actually been really gentle today. Uh, normally, he would have probably stretched out to about here and tried eating my face, but today he's been quite good. So, yeah, there he is. Love the banana gene. Probably one of my top three genes I love. Okay, so there's a look at some of my animals that are fed. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the females have gone off food, and that's because I am pairing them, so they sort of build up to a certain point, and then they do tend to just stop feeding, and that is completely normal. Um, there's a couple of females that are still feeding, which is brilliant, which means they're not close to ovulation yet, but there's other ones that have just gone completely off food, so I am looking for them to ovulate in the next, next few weeks, which is really, really exciting. As you can see as well, the snakes behind me, most of them fed, a couple of them are still on live. I'm not gonna record feeding live because I, I don't really agree with feeding live unless you really have to. I'll only feed live as kind of a, 
a second from last resort. If they won't eat after a few weeks and they and they won't take live either, that's when I go ahead and assist feed. But assist feeding for me is probably the most stressful part for the snake, so I leave that till last. But I've mentioned this in my previous videos, and I have done a video on how I assist feed my snakes that aren't eating. Um, so I'm not going to show you that. Like I said, I'm not a big fan of feeding live, but sometimes you've got to do what's best for those snakes at the time. It's always in their best interest. Um, so yeah. As you can see, um, I do feed in the dark as well. I've moved the lights around a little bit, but I, that's why the footage is probably going to be quite dark. I do feed normally, not in complete darkness, but I will dim the lights right down just because I feel like the snakes are a lot more comfortable feeding that way and I have a higher feeding success rate by doing that. And also you're going to see in the tubs, there are some sheds, there are some dirty bits of paper and some poops. And that's because I believe in feeding dirty. And what I mean by that is that a couple of days before I feed, I won't touch the snakes. I won't pull the drawers out to have a look. I won't do any spot cleaning. It, it, it drives my OCD absolutely nuts. Because as soon as I see the tiniest amount of, of something or the bowl's been knocked over, there's a bit of coconut in the bowl, I'm straight in there cleaning it straight away. I hate to see mess in my snake tubs. But you'll see in a lot of these things, you'll see there's shed in there, a bit, a little bit of poo dirt and that's because I leave the snakes dirty because I make it, it makes them feel a little bit more comfortable in my opinion uh, if you take a snake out clean it and try and feed it, feed it the next day it may feed but it just doesn't have that natural smell around it of its own habitat so I like to feed dirty just because I feel the snakes are that little bit more confident feeding as well so that's just how I do it that's how I've, I feel confident do it and that's how I feel I get the best success rate with my snakes so yeah it's just a little look at what I do so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the incubator, I'm going to show you the uh, clutch that is due to Pip and I'm just going to give you a side by side comparison of what they did look like and how they're starting to look now. Quickly just check this out, I don't normally get a, um, a decent shed from a snake, a lot of my snakes they don't shed in one piece, it is in bits but I've not had a full face shed in a long time and yeah I just, I just think it's amazing, look how cool that is, you can see the eyes. That's really cool, and I did have quite a decent shed as well from uh, my bumblebee girl. You can see it's quite long. It's not full shed, it's all sort of broken off at the top and uh, broken off at the bottom. That is actually her face piece that she shed, but yeah, just look at that. And the thing that I love about the spider shed is that I think it's one of the only morphs where you can actually see the spider pattern on, on the shed. Um, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure with most genes, when they shed, you can't actually see the pattern. It is just a, a plain color or a little bit of darkness, but the spider gene, you do actually get that pattern on the shed, which I think is really, really cool. But yeah, this come out and I was like, oh, I'm definitely gonna hold on to that. That's, that's gonna be pinned up somewhere. So as you can see, I finally got my little, my clutch clods with the, the eggs and stuff. And yeah, I love the way these turned out. I've got a few more uh, adjustments to make on these, but eventually these will be printed in cards. So I can't wait to do that. Um, you can see I've got my little thermostat, you can see it's reading 89.8 .8 inside this box, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, it doesn't really fluctuate past that much, it's probably sort of low 89s to sort of up to 90. Um, sometimes it will dip a little bit depending if I have the door open in my snake room, but it, it pretty much stays around 89 onwards. So a point of a degree doesn't really bother me too much, so I'm, I'm really happy with that. So. Yeah, this uh, clutch is the Butter Spider Pinstripe Pastel that I've got. Um, female, and she was bred to the Leopard Pastel from Harvey. Now, there's going to be a lot of things going on here. Um, it's going to be quite difficult if I get some sort of four or five gene animals. It is going to be quite difficult. And also, I've got the Butter and the Mojave there. They're both part of the Bell Complex. So, if I do get any Blue Eyed Lucies, then they could have Leopard, Spider, they could have all sorts of them. So, um, it's going to be an interesting one to try and work out. If I do get any bells, I probably will keep them, especially if I get the bell with the leopard. Um, I'm pretty sure that does make something a little bit special. I think it's called an MA smoke, and it's like a, a really dark grey um, snake with blue eyes. So I'm hoping I hit that, but um, most of this clutch probably will be available unless I hit that snake. The other snake I want to try and hit is the um, leopard killer bee, so the leopard super pastel spider. Um, I think it looks absolutely amazing. If I do manage to get one of those, that will be plugged straight into the clown project to try and turn that into clown because I, I don't know what it would do, but I just love the pattern of it. So yeah, that's this uh, clutch. If we just lift the lid up. Now you know I don't like messing about with my clutches too much. Once they're in the incubator, that's basically where they stay. I don't like to move them about, open them up or anything like that. But here are the eggs now. If you saw my Instagram post, we did lose an egg, unfortunately. Um, 
again no matter how much you try and make everything right and get everything perfect sometimes you just you just can't help mother nature it just ends up taking its course so it is a shame it's not nice to lose an egg but you you can't control that basically um but yeah if you haven't seen that go and have head over to my instagram page tinge ginger i've got all on there so i've been through how i do my eggs before i'm not going to go for it again but this is how i set my eggs up this is going to change shortly anyway because i do have something going on that i will be showing shortly and here are the eggs so you can see here, if I zoom in onto the back, you can see all of that is the humidity. So I know the humidity in here is fine because I've got all the condensation on the side. That's absolutely brilliant. I can feel as well, I push in there, I can feel that does feel moist. It doesn't feel dry and it still, it still clumps together kind of well. So I know the humidity in there is absolutely perfect. But you can start to see, I'll show you on this one, there's a little bit of dimple in there little bit of dimpling there that one's starting to dimple over the back there that guy's starting to dimple and that just tells me that the the snakes are starting to form properly they're starting to absorb the yolk absorb that liquid and albumin that's inside the egg and it just means that they are getting ready and when I cut my eggs I like to see these eggs quite deflated so when you do go up to the egg and you can pinch them and they go all wrinkly and you can get like a nice ridge along the top and you can feel the baby on the sides that's how I like my eggs to be before I cut them um, sometimes I'll pit before that and that's fine but I like to cut my eggs when they look like that just so I know they are definitely ready um, so what I'm going to do is now I'm going to quickly show you um, what they actually look like uh, in the egg now so I don't uh, recommend doing this because obviously if you're shining a light into the egg you can cause these snakes some sort of distress can cause problems with the umbilical cord and things like that so I, I'd recommend not to do it but with this torch that I've got I can put it on quite a low setting so hopefully it's not going to disturb them too much and it will just give you a little view into what the eggs look like. Before I quickly show you that I've just seen, seen this big banana guy eating, he is an absolute beast. Come on focus, he is absolutely destroying that rat like it's nothing. He could probably take something slightly big now if you wanted to, but I like to keep my mouths. I like to keep my mouths quite lean. Um, I don't want my mouths getting too overweight, so they still get fed weekly. But I just don't feed them a larger prey item. I don't want them getting too lazy, so I like to keep them sort of on the lean side. And um, yeah, obviously if they are breeding, I probably will try and feed them a decent sized meal just so they can keep that energy up. But if they're not breeding, then you know I like I like to keep them keen. On their food so i don't feed too heavily but yeah look at him go he's an absolute machine okay so i'm going to try and get as decent a view as possible as i can but if we zoom in on this egg i'm just going to show you you can see the veins there they look normal just like when you would candle in a leg you can see they're completely normal now sometimes when you actually candle you can actually see the outline of the snake and it moves but you can see here the veins are absolutely perfect no problems with any of these. And yeah, so you can see, oh, you see there's a little bit of business in there. And if you see at the bottom there, you can see like it's sort of filled up. That's basically uh, the baby snake at the bottom. Oh, do you see that? It just kicked. So you can see that moving. That's not me moving the torch. That's the actual snake inside. See in there at the bottom, bottom of the egg. He's having a little twitch, a little move, and that's because I've shined that egg on. So I'm not going to keep it there for too long, just because I don't want to stress it out too much. But that's basically how you know that they're doing good. All the eggs have got veins, absolutely brilliant. And yeah, so as you can see, got a little bit of movement from the embryo there, which is absolutely brilliant. And just thought I'd give you an update on these clutch. So these are actually due to pip on the 19th of June. So we've not got too long before we can actually start egg cutting. I just cannot wait. Um, yeah, it's going to be really exciting. First clutch of the year is almost ready to go. Okay, so now I'm going to get into the, the new snakes that I've bought. Um, I'm really, really happy with these guys. Um, they're absolutely fantastic. So the first one I want to show you is this boy. So this is my new Albino G-Strap male. And yeah, I've been wanting to get into the genetic stripe for a while. Um, there's so many combos out there. I was looking at banana genetic stripes. Um, and a few others and I just I just couldn't decide on what I wanted um, and after a while I was sort of scrolling through stuff and for some reason I, I, I don't know why I just decided to go with the albino side of it um, I love the albino gene I'll be getting into some lavender albino stuff as well um, I just I just love bright snakes to be honest when they're like this I am generally a dark kind of guy but 
I don't know, it's just something about albinos that I just love, especially when you get those high contrast ones. When they pop out here, they just they just wow you. Even a, a simple, single gene albino, they just look absolutely incredible. Um, so yeah, I've got a few plans for this guy. I'm not going to reveal them yet, just because I want to have a little bit more of research into it, just to see what I definitely want. But I've got two or three girls that he could possibly go to. Um, obviously, I'll be uh, creating heads. So the albino and the G-stripe are both recessive, so um, I will be breeding into something with neither of those genes. So it will be double het, if not triple het. There's a little clue of what it might be going into. But yeah, absolutely stunning, this guy. And yeah, he's not too far off breeding. He's probably around 200 grams. So he's got a few months to go yet, but that's fine because I've got a couple of girls that will be ready shortly. So as soon as this guy's up to size, those girls will have plenty of weight for him to, uh, to crack on with. So the next one I'm going to show you is this boy. I was so happy I found him, especially at this size as well. So this is my Ultra Male Male. Now I've been wanting to get into the Ultra Male for quite a while now. Um, I didn't actually know about this gene until I started watching Gav from Balls to You. Um, the first time he showed me it, I thought it was like a, a caramel or something like that. But it was only when he started saying about the Ultra Male and uh, that how well they do, they don't have the kinking issue and things like that. And yeah, this. As soon as I saw him sh uh, show off those snakes, I thought, yeah, that's, that is one for me. And um, th this guy was there, and I just I just couldn't refuse him, basically. He was given to me at a really good price, and he's, he's a decent size as well. I think he's probably about three, pushing 300 grams now. So he'll be up to size in no time. Um, but yeah, really, really excited about this. It's another recessive that I've got. I'm slowly working my way down the list, and I'm, <laughs> I don't think I'm too far having one of everything gene-wise, so... I'm slowly building up those foundations, slowly getting to that end result where I can just build up my head army and then I'll just have some amazing combos coming out in the next few years. So yeah, really happy that I picked this guy up. Finally, we've got this girl here and I'm really, really chuffed with this girl. I can't, can't believe that she was available when I was looking and she popped up at literally the perfect moment. So this is my bamboo special calico. Now I don't have bamboo special or calico in my co uh, collection. So to get all three of them genes in one snake into my collection is absolutely amazing. This girl is lovely. Now I do like a pure white snake, but she's got like this little orange dot on her head. Check that out. So cool. And she's got this crazy yellow pattern goes all the way down her back and then fades out towards her tail but I love this girl now the uh, bamboo and the special are Lelix, so they are part of the bell complex so she does have the blue eyes I don't know if I can zoom in enough to show you that but she's got gorgeous eyes they're so bright and I, I do love the blue-eyed Lucy stuff it is probably one of the snakes that actually helped get me into this hobby but yeah she's absolutely amazing and I'll see she's quite small I think she's probably about 250 grams so she has got a few years yet, but that's completely fine because with the projects I've got going on at the minute, um, she should be able to size by the time I've got the males that I want to go to her. Now, because she is a bamboo special Lily, it means 50% of the babies are going to be bamboo and 50% of the babies are going to be special. So I shouldn't get any normals out of this, um, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, she is going to be plugged into some recessive stuff, um, probably mainly clown just because Bamboo clowns look amazing. Um, I have seen calico clowns. I'm not a big fan of them. Um, I don't think the calico really does anything to the clown, but that's probably just the ones I've seen. And special clowns, I do like the look of. Um, I don't, again, I don't think they change the pattern too much, but I, I'm just big on the clown anyway. So um, if I can get some bamboo clowns, that'd be absolutely amazing. So with the other jeans I've got going on as well, um, yeah, there's just going to be all sorts being plugged into her clan wise. So once she gets up to size, that's that's going to be some really, really exciting combos that I could make. Okay, so that's going to bring us to the end of the video. I really hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I haven't posted for a while because I've been working flat out for the last couple of weeks. And there's just been so much going on that I just haven't had a chance to pick up the camera. Um, if you do, like I've said before, follow me on Instagram. You will see that I have a 3D printer now. I'm, I'm so geeking out on it right now it's absolutely amazing um, some of the stuff I've made is incredible I've made like a little pig pee bank I've made a little flexible cat um, what I've made I've made a little fish key ring and at the minute I'm also making some for my mum she has really bad sciatica so I've made a little tool that I can actually use to dig down into her sciatic areas just to try and relieve it whether it works or not I don't know but 
basically the possibilities with this are absolutely endless. I've got something very, very special that I'm working on. Um, I can't tell you anything. I will be patterning it very soon because the design is almost finished and I'm hoping it's going to be something that will be big in this industry, helping people with their snakes and clutches. Um, I'm not going to say too much because I don't want to give it away, but I've, for me, I think it's a really, really good idea. I think it's going to benefit a lot of new people coming into this hobby. Um, so yeah, I've got that on the go. And also, I want to try and 3D print a hatchling tub. Um, the hatchling tubs, they don't need to be big, and I think the smaller you can get away with, the better for the hatchling. It just makes them feel a little bit more comfortable when they do start to feed. So I'm going to see if I can 3D print a hatchling tub with the bowl and the ventilation holes and sort of a divider as well so they can hide. I'm going to give it a go, I'm going to see how it turns out, I'm, I'm not hopeful, I, I did a little rough design and it said it was going to take like 67 hours to print, I was like oh my god I, I cannot wait 67 hours so I need to tweak it a little bit but there's going to be a lot of things I'm going to be making with my 3D printer for my snakes, um, so make sure you do tune in and keep following me on uh, Instagram because you don't want to miss all the little secret bits that I'm going to be popping up. And um, if it does work and it's really good and people are interested in it, then maybe I can start making them and send them out to people. Who knows? It, the possibilities with that thing are absolutely endless. So I really hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Make sure you are subscribed. I think about 67% of the people that view my videos aren't actually subscribed. So all you've got to do is just click that button. It's literally the bottom. It takes two seconds to do it and it just helps me and this channel out so much more. Just so I can try and bring you the best content possible. Thank you for the people that do watch me, everyone that's on my Instagram and my subscribers. I get great, great feedback from you guys and you're just absolutely amazing. You just make doing YouTube so much more worthwhile. So I really hope that you carry on watching. I hope I can help you out and entertain you as much as possible. So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, steady. Oh, goodness. Come on, let go, please. Oh. Oh.